Praise the Lord and welcome to Faith Temple Lighthouse Church. We thank you. We are located at 7000 Bennett Street here in Homewood. We thank you for joining us virtually. You can also join us through the weekdays. Um, on Sunday, we do have Sunday morning worship. Um, our Bible Sunday school starts at 1030 and our morning worship starts at 1130. We will bring to you today our very own Elder Bernie Carter. And we thank you again for worshiping with us. Amen. We thank and praise God today for being back into the house of God. It's always an honor to be in the house of God. The best place to be in the whole world is to be in God's house. This is the only place that we could go to heaven from, is the house of God. And I thank and praise the Lord for my pastor, Pastor Long, First Lady Vicki. Come on, let's give him a hand. Praise. <laughs> I give honor to all the ministry, all the ministry, and all the precious people of God. And like I always tell y'all, holiness is the best title there is. I'd rather have holiness than Elder Carter. Because holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It didn't say nothing about no Elder Carter. Amen, because I want to see the Lord in peace. You know, I thank and praise God because of <clears throat> the testimonies. I thank and praise God for the Bible class on Friday. You know, I thank and praise the Lord for the Sunday school this morning. It's good to be faithful to God. You know, I've been in the church almost 40 years, and I can't even count 10 times that I missed on a Sunday. And, 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 I, and I honor myself for that because, you know, people miss every week. And I try to be faithful. And, and, and faithfulness will bring, bring you blessings. You know, I uh, heard Mother Bife for talking about giving. That'll bring you blessings too. But we have to love God. You know, uh, my pastor used to always tell me, he said, you know why I'm so wise? He said, God don't speak to me all the time. I just watch their life. You see, you see what they're doing. You know what I mean? Do you come to Bible class? Do you come to prayer? You know what I mean? Is you faithful to the pastor? Do you obey? Because a lot of times we want a lot of things, but we don't put nothing in. I might not get a whole bunch of amens today, but that's all right. I brought a few of them with me. I say amen to Bernie and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but God is good. I'm going to read this scripture. I'm not going to leave it for you long because you ain't got to be long to be strong. You know what I mean? Just long as somebody get the word of God down in their heart. You know, that's what we come for. We come forward to try to just to get the word of God down in our heart so we can walk holy. You know, I want you to turn to. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blind their minds to them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel, the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourself, your servant for Jesus Christ. I want to jump down to eight. For we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Lord, we ask you, Lord, just to have your way in the sanctuary today by your Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we pray. And my subject today is a simple subject. Everything that we need is in Jesus, but we got to remember that we got a responsibility. We do 
having responsibility. We find that the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. And by God giving us the gospel, he also gave us a five-fold ministry, you know. And the five-fold ministry is to help the church and also to help the lost in the world. It is to try to save a soul and to keep us right. Amen. That's what the gospel is for. If we read in verse, <clears throat> verse 5, it says, we preach, our, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, ourselves, your servant, for Jesus' sake. That is more or less saying that we preach this gospel for Jesus, the death, burial, resurrection, and his salvation to be saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, a lot of people can't see that because they don't spend a lot of time with God. No, no. But whenever you preach about Jesus, no, no. you're speaking about salvation, no, no. No, no. about him dying on the cross. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this fivefold ministry. People always come up to me and ask me, hey, Elder Carter, do you think that there's apostles these days? You know, everybody want titles. I don't want no title. You could call me Brother Bernie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I do want holiness. No, no, no. I believe that there's apostles of these days, but I believe that they only hold the title of a high position in the church. With wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Y'all looking at me. I ain't going to be a whole bunch of amen. Now, 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 because Paul said, he said, the apostle doctrine is true. So the apostles these days can't add nothing to the Bible. I hope y'all got that. That's why they could only hold the title. You see? Because the, we 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 were learning from the Bible, and then the apostles was handpicked by Jesus, certified. You got to be certified to write something down in this Bible. So I will respect them. And then the next one, ministers really need to learn learn this one, especially if you're just coming into the ministry. They got the prophets. Prophets is foretelling, mm -hmm. foreknowing. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes God let us know things with clarification that he's going to do it. My house was prophesied, and it came true. The lady came back the next year and prophesied my house. That's just God being good to us. I'm talking about the fivefold ministry. Now, now we got the teachers. Uh oh. Now listen to this minister. If you, if you plan on being a preacher, now you could be a teacher, but that don't mean you a preacher. <laughs> now y'all, y'all, y'all gotta get that straight. But a preacher got to be a teacher. <laughs> get too many amens. That's okay. But y'all going to learn something today. <laughs> now, the evangelists, they go around the world, home, other churches, the priest, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because it's all about trying to win a soul. It's all about trying to stay saved. Now, that's an evangelist. Now, it, it, it's mixed up to me today because people be saying they pastors and can't teach. Something wrong with that because you got to take care of the flock. How is you going to be a pastor and you can't teach, huh, the flock? Uh, uh, it's good to know God. It's good. 
that five-fold ministry. Our job is to preach the gospel to tear down the kingdom of Satan. I don't preach this for competition. I don't want to be better than you or you better than me. I'm trying to preach this to think that I can save a soul and keep myself. I'm trying to keep me. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to do all this for nothing. Some of our responsibilities and everything we need is in Jesus. But we can't forget about our responsibility. We got to walk holy. That's one of them. We got to keep the faith. That's two of them. We got to pray and fast. That's four of them. Huh? We got to witness to the Lord. Five of them. We don't get these things from God not doing nothing. Well, y'all, y'all, y'all just stay with me for, for a little bit. That's a responsibility. You know, oh, God going to give me a house, but you're not using your responsibility. That's okay, because I'm going to make sure you get this one. You know, we also got to be faithful to God. We got to be faithful to ourselves, because what you're doing in the dark, God see you in the light. You know, some people live like the devil all during the week and come to church on Sunday and act like they so holy rolling. You might have fooled me, but you cannot fool God. And we got to know this. And look at this. This is what Jesus said. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command. So when we try to win somebody, we got to teach them. You don't just teach them. And I heard, oh, that class was good Friday. We don't teach nobody and then bring them in the church and the church is all messed up. We got to be right ourselves. You ain't got to say amen. You ain't got to say amen. I say amen. Because we got to have them responsibilities in us. You know, I was glad to see somebody new come in today, too. But I want them to know that we preach the truth here, and we try to live it. It's not all the time hopping around up here. I can hop around, make y'all shout, jump up, clap your hands and everything. But sometimes you need to know the truth. He said, go out, and then we got to teach them to exert. But everything we need, everything we need uh, is with Jesus. Uh, Every time we preach is in Jesus. Uh, I don't care what it is today. Uh, It's with Jesus. Uh, I reminded when John and Jane, when John and Peter went up to the house of God. And there was a crippled man laying right in the front of the church, if I can say. And he said to him, look upon me. And the crippled man looked upon him. And I don't know why the preachers was broke. I'm a preacher. I'm not broke. But but I tell you one thing. They said silver and gold. Have I none? But he said, but such as I have, I give unto you. And he told him to get up and start walking. That's why I say everything that you need is in the name of Jesus. You see, some of us need a miracle, but we can't forget our responsibility. We got to live right. We got to live holy. And we got to live acceptable in the sight of God. I don't care who you are. You got to live holy. You got to walk 
holy. You got to look holy. You got to even be faithful. And I'm going to tell y'all another thing about that five-fold ministry. There's a six-fold that I'm going to add to it. I'm going to tell y'all the learners that y'all know, that y'all we teach y'all. Y'all got to go and tell somebody on your job about Jesus. Every time you tell somebody about Jesus, you're telling them about salvation. You don't just come to church and learn this word and don't go tell somebody. You got to tell somebody about God. See, y'all think that y'all, y'all just get away. No, y'all don't get just get away. Y'all know the word of God. You got to go tell the word of God. I don't care if you're on your job. You can be on the bus. You can be downtown. But you got to tell somebody about Jesus with that responsibility. God's been good to us. And we got to know that God's been good. We got to know. Sometimes people think, and I'm going to tell you about that telephone. We need to stay off that telephone and talking about people. God has given every one of us a purpose. But we be on the phone. We be talking about this person. That's not in your purpose to be talking about folks. That's not in the will of God to be talking about folks. Some of us are watch movies all day. We'll watch this movie and then we'll watch that movie. That's not in the purpose of God. Ain't nothing wrong with watching a movie movie, but you cannot watch it all day long and do your responsibility. Sometimes you got to pray. Sometimes you got to fast. Sometimes you got to call somebody up and ask them if they doing okay. Sometimes you just got to do right. Sometimes all that other stuff is not in the will of God. And I'm telling you now, we want so much. Sometimes we want to get healed, but we won't use our responsibility. There's a lot of things probably in this church that we need. But God, when you're sick, you need to call on God. When you're sick, you need to fast sometimes. When you're sick, you need to be holy, saved, sanctified, set aside for the will of God. You got to have your responsibility working. I'm talking about the power of God. The Bible said after you have received the Holy Ghost, you have received, I got power to walk right. I got power to talk right. I got power to do my responsibility. I got power to get healed. I got power to get a miracle. I got power to walk upright. I got power. I'm talking about power, power. God is good. Hallelujah. But most of the time, people just think God just take anything. No, he don't. God want our best. And I'm telling you right now, if you want your blessing, start getting into the responsibility. Get off that phone. Stop looking at all the movies. Stop talking about folks. Learn how to forgive. That's one thing that I thank God for. There was people that came out when I taught that class about love and forgiveness I know them people will pass it on I know they will tell somebody I might not have a big crowd but the people that was there I know they love the Lord and I know that they gonna tell somebody about God that's what it's all about me preaching to y'all and y'all telling somebody God wants us to bring somebody to heaven with us. Oh, you think you want to go by yourself? You cannot. You need to help somebody. That's what it's all about is helping. That's what it's all about, praying. 
That's what it's all about, being faithful. That's our responsibility. Oh, Lord. The responsibility. And then our children. We got to keep praying for our children. Quit watching the movies. Quit getting on that telephone. Start crying out to God. That's not in the purpose of God. You got a purpose. God got a design purpose for you. Don't care if people hate you. That's only going to make you stronger. I know people don't like me. They walk right up in my face. And then go around the corner and talk about me. And the person they talking to is my friend. And you know what I tell them? I said, that's their problem, man. I ain't worried about that. I'm trying to make it to heaven. I wasn't in the church all my life. And like I said, last time I preached, I had real bad trouble out my boy. We heard about that. Even the children. These mothers and fathers is crazy nowadays. You know, you go to go try to talk to them. They want to fight you. You scared they might have a gun. A couple of weeks ago, I heard they shot up a church. Oh, my God. The devil don't care nothing about us. When you start coming up into the church, shooting the church up, you got a problem. But we should show our children love. We know they bad. But we still got to show them love because it starts at home. We got to know in our mind. We got to get a mindset of God. You know, I'm going to tell the truth. When I was in the world, I did 100% what the world did. We would go all the way from ranking to Clarendon just to get some high. I would go from there to the hill. From the hill, I never loafed in Homewood. But we would go anywhere we knew where it was. Why can't we do that for God? Somebody invited me to come to church this afternoon. I might go. You know why? Because we can't do enough for God. It's good to come to the house of God. God is going to bless you. I don't know how he's going to bless you, but like I said, he's not going to never let you outdo him. He'll just come just because you showed up, and it ain't no accident y'all here. God knew that from the beginning. But I thank God for you being here. Don't nothing happen unless God let it happen. Don't you know God already know what everybody in here going to say tomorrow if you live? Every word that you say, he know every thought and every imagination of the heart, everybody in this whole world at one time. And you mean to tell me you don't want to serve a God like that? You know when I be praying sometimes, I say, Lord, Lord, I'm scared of you. I say, I am so scared. How can somebody know every thought Everybody's thinking in the whole world at one time, and you can imagine a bad situation about somebody, and he know that too. That's awesome. Too awesome for me. And I get afraid when I talk to God. Sometimes I be up in my room, I be talking to God. I be saying, Lord, you know I don't take no credit for nothing. Lord, I know everything you did for me, you did it. I don't do nothing. I know people might be mad, but I be talking to God like I'm talking to a real person. Because I'm not taking credit for nothing. People, a lot of people, I always go to churches and preach. I tell them, just because you've been in the church a long time don't mean you own the church. The Bible say the church is the Lord's. He said, upon this rock, I build my church. 
And then if you was in there for 30 years, how long have you been using your responsibility? It's a different when you're in the church. I don't want to be. I want to have a relationship with God. God talks to me sometimes. I have a close relationship with God. I'm not bragging, but I spend time with God. And when you spend time with God, God will start talking to you in your conscience. But you ain't going to be able to do that if you're on the phone. I don't know why I said phone movies today. <laughs> because that's what most people do. Want to watch Netflix all day. But we got to remember, saints, our responsibility. It's not about us getting up here all the time hooping and hollering. And ain't nobody getting nothing. Sometimes you got to break this thing down. Sometimes we forget about what we're supposed to do. I'm so glad. You know, this is shame. Back in the day, the police arrested me. He had me all handcuffed up. Yeah, the preacher man used to get handcuffed. And uh, he said, you know what, get on in that car. He said, you know what, the devil don't even want you. I'm so glad the devil didn't want me. <laughs> he called himself insulting me. <laughs> The devil want anybody that he can get. That's who the devil want anyone that he can get. But at that time, I didn't know no better. Talking about the devil didn't want me. Yes, he did. But I thank be to God. God has saved my life so many times. I get scared myself when I think, oh, God, all the good good thing that God has done for me. I'm going to get his testimony. I'm going to leave. I'm going to sit down. But this is just one of them. I took, we took my whole family to Disney World. We was on the bus. I tell it every once in a while. And we was in the back of the bus. And this bus driver was going, boy, he looked like he was going 200 miles an hour. This bus driver was moving. We was going to get to Florida. We was going to get there fast, too. But anyway, everybody was asleep. I was not asleep on that bus. My whole family was in the back of that bus. I had grandkids. I had my kids. I had everybody. We was just going down there to have a good time. And next thing you know, the bus driver went to sleep. And when he hit that truck, he broke his arms and his legs. There was a big tractor trailer in back of me. Lord have mercy. And you mean to tell me I'm not going to thank God? The tractor trailer. Now look what the bus did. The, the man couldn't turn the, turn the wheel because his arms and his legs was broke. The, the, the bus went over into the pavement in the middle. He allowed that big rig to come by because if you would have hit that bus my whole family would have been dead you know that was God he couldn't even turn and then the break of day come the man in back of the rig he came out he said I was so afraid and he was asking who was in the back he said I thought I was going to hit that he said I don't know how that bus went over there like that he said but it did that was God don't you tell me what God, my family would be dead right now, and probably including me too. See, sometimes you got to tell people what God would do. Somebody said something about a testimony. How you going to have a testimony if you never went through nothing? That wasn't nobody but God. The bus driver couldn't even tell. He, he was like this. And the bus 
went over in the thing and stopped. And he was, didn't I tell you he was flying? My man was moving. And I, I, I and my daughter got up. I'm going to get ready to quit. She got up and started to, ah, Remember my wife said, shut up, girl. You don't even want to scream it like that. <laughs> but it was something to think about. And it is something to say, Lord, I thank you. You know, you know, my whole family could have been dead. But God seen this day. And we talk about that all the time. I, I tell that testimony every once in a while. I got plenty more, but I tell that one all the time, once in a while, because my whole family could have been dead. But look at God. He could take the seat of the bus driver with a broken arm and broken, because all he was doing, he was just there. He couldn't do nothing. Couldn't do a thing. You remember that, Mike? We used to go to church again. He remembered that. I'm not telling no lie. I'm telling the truth. What I look like up here telling y'all a lie for and God going to get me. I ain't going to tell no lie anyway. I heard that in Sunday school. See, that's why it's good to come out. <laughs> See, I be laughing and stuff. But it's good to be faithful so that you can learn of God and know about God and try to get a relationship with God. Just don't try to just come to church, but try to come to church to get a relationship with God. Study your Bible. I study my Bible. The same way I was in the world, that's the same way I am for God now. And everybody know I was a mess. I was a mess. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about saying that because, you know what I mean, people see what God done did. And one thing about my life, can't nobody get the credit but God. That's why he probably saved me. Because they, they tell me, how could he do that? When you got God on your side, and when you're trying to take care of them responsibilities, you're going to be all right because when we was coming to church, Priest, you remember, we was hungry for God. The preacher didn't have to push us to come to church. We was there sometimes before the preacher because we wanted to know something about God. Nowadays, you got to call them up five times. You got to ask them where you've been at for three weeks. We shouldn't have to do that if you love God. It'll show up in your life. And I definitely don't care about somebody not liking me. Matter of fact, they making me grow. What, what difference does it make if somebody say something bad about you? But it don't make no difference to me. I mean, as long as you don't put your hands on me, and, and you know, you know, I'm not saying I'm gonna fight you back. But like we was in Bible class that day, y'all know good tea well, the Bible say, if they smack you on one cheek, turn the other. I'm, I'm really sitting down on this one. Y'all know good tea well. I, I'm talking about everybody in here. I don't know, Pastor, Pastor Mike Pastor the <laughs> Can't put the pastor down. <laughs> but if somebody smack me in my face, I'm going to tell the truth. I'll probably push them back and say, man, what you doing? <laughs> no, but you might as well be real about it. You know good team well. You're not going to let nobody smack you in the face and say, hit this one too. You ain't going to do that. No, oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, y'all gonna say hit this one too. Not me. I'm, I try my best, but most likely I'm gonna push them back. I'm gonna say, Lord, help me, Lord. I'm gonna say, Lord, help me. And I forgot about that verse. 
pray my scripture in the Lord. 